Well, Civil War was number one at the box office this weekend. And we proved once again today that the only place we're ever going to have a civil war is on the screens in the movie theaters where that film is playing. Donald Trump would love to have a civil war of sorts over the criminal prosecution that he's facing now in Manhattan. He would probably love to have what he would call his term a bloodbath or something like what we saw on January 6th, an uprising that could shut down the courthouse, stop the proceedings maybe. But once again today, as I just said, Donald Trump got nothing. And he knew, he knew he was gonna get nothing from his supporters, which is why he didn't make the public mistake of summoning them to Manhattan to gather outside the courthouse, a mistake that he did make one year ago when he was arraigned at that same courthouse and no one showed up to try to block that proceeding the way they tried to block the certification of Joe Biden's Electoral College win on January 6th. A year ago, April 4th, 2023, Donald Trump pleaded not guilty in that courthouse and he pleaded with his followers to be there, but I walked down to the courthouse to see the crowd that gathered to support Donald Trump. It wasn't, it was a smaller crowd than I expected. I expected a small crowd. It was still smaller than that. The news media far outnumbered the Trump protesters then, all of whom were well behaved, the protesters, I mean, as I expected. And I said then on this program that you had nothing to worry about with Trump supporters trying to cause trouble or violence at Trump trials. And we have more proof of that today. The criminal court where Donald Trump is being tried is in a campus of courthouses that include federal courts and state courts, all kind of close together. And in roaming the campus today, I found no more than a couple dozen Trump supporters and maybe more anti-Trump demonstrators, all of whom were very peaceful and usually very, very quiet. So peaceful and quiet that babies were sleeping in the shadow of a courthouse. Literally, baby sleeping. That was the first photo I took this morning on my morning walk to the Trump courthouse, the sleeping babies. And according to reporting in the New York Times and the Washington Post tonight, babies were not the only sleepers in the neighborhood. Maggie Haberman, who was in the courtroom, reports for the New York Times under the headline, a weary Trump appears to doze off in courtroom. Former President Donald J. Trump seemed alternately Irritated and exhausted Monday morning as his lawyers and prosecutors hashed out pretrial motions before jury selection in his criminal case, Mr. Trump appeared to nod off a few times, his mouth going slack and his head drooping onto his chest. The former president's lead lawyer, Todd Blanche, passed him notes for several minutes before Trump appeared to jolt awake and notice them. Under the headline, Trump seems to nod off briefly as prospective jurors get instructions, the Washington Post reports, quote, former President Donald Trump closed his eyes and at times appeared to nod off Monday afternoon in a Manhattan courtroom as prospective jurors were instructed on what they would need to do to serve on the jury in his hush money criminal trial. Trump closed his eyes several times. He then abruptly caught himself and stiffened his posture. His attorneys, Todd Blanche and Emil Bove, Re <clears throat> refilled his drink and gave each other an awkward look at the defense table. Awkward indeed. Unfortunately, the trial is not televised, so we have no video confirmation of the 77-year-old criminal defendant falling asleep in court. The trial will not be televised, and the revolution will not be televised because they didn't show up. Not only are Trump voters no longer willing to violently revolt for Donald Trump, they will not even show up at his criminal trials. There are actually 85,000 Trump voters living just on the island of Manhattan, and none of them bothered to go down to the courthouse today. None of the Trump supporters I spoke to there are from New York. Other press accounts quote Trump supporters from Pennsylvania. So if you include eastern Pennsylvania and, say, driving distances of an hour and a half, from that courthouse, there are several million Trump voters 
who live on Long Island and Connecticut and New York State and New Jersey and Pennsylvania, who could easily have been at that courthouse today, millions of them, but they don't care that much about Donald Trump. They'll vote for him, but they won't revolt for him. They won't even show up for him. And so Donald Trump has given up asking them to even show up at his trials. And instead today, he just asked them for money. Money he told them he would never need when he began running for president and promised to pay for his campaign himself because, as he said then, quote, I am very rich. Today, he asked for what he called a million patriots to send him money because he desperately needs it because he's not rich enough. But he didn't ask for any patriots to come to his courthouse because he knows they won't come. They just won't come. And that is a very good sign about just how stable this country actually is tonight. The first words Donald Trump heard in the courtroom today were from the clerk saying, this is the people of the state of New York versus Donald J. Trump. The judge immediately denied the latest Trump motion, asking, him, asking the judge to recuse himself. Judge Juan Mershon then moved on to some scheduling issues, saying he was not yet sure about a scheduling request, quote, regarding counsel's request that the court adjourn on Friday, May 17th, for Mr. Trump to attend his son's high school graduation, and Friday, June 3rd, to allow a member of the defense team to attend their son's graduation. I cannot rule on those two requests at this time. It really depends on how we are doing on time and where we are in the trial. If everything is going according to schedule without unnecessary delays, then I am sure we will be able to adjourn for one or both of those days. But if we are running behind schedule, we will not be able to. Of course, if Donald Trump had been more interested in spending time with his son in the first months of his son's life, Instead of spending time with Stormy Daniels in those days, Donald Trump would definitely be available for his son's high school graduation this year. Donald Trump's son was four months old when Donald Trump spent an evening, spent an evening with Stormy Daniels that he just as easily could have spent with his four-month-old baby if he cared enough about that baby. In 1982, the New York State Supreme Court ruled on the case of People v. Parker, which established what has become known as the Parker warnings that a judge must give a defendant. Before the potential jurors were called into the courtroom, Judge Mershon gave Donald Trump the Parker warnings that he gave him when he was actually arraigned in that courtroom a year ago. The judge said, although you've already had the Parker warnings, I am going to repeat them at this time now that we're at a different stage of the proceedings. Today, we're going to begin to pick a jury. So these Parker warnings take on special significance. You have the right to be present during the trial. And that is an important right. It permits you to assist in your defense, to assist your attorneys in their defense of you. Do you understand Trump? Yes, sir, the judge. You can, however, on your conduct, lose that right to be present. If you disrupt the proceedings in any way, the law permits the court to exclude you from the courtroom and commit you to jail and continue the trial in your absence. Do you understand Trump? Yes. The judge, if you deliberately fail to appear here for trial, that will constitute a forfeiture of your right to be present. A warrant will be issued for your arrest. The trial will continue in your absence. And if there is a verdict of guilty and you again fail to appear for sentence, you will be sentenced in absentia. And upon your arrest, a sentence will be executed and you will be subject to separate prosecution and separate punishment for bail jumping, no matter what happens in this trial. Do you understand that, Trump? Yes, sir. The judge. Thank you. 96 potential jurors were called into the courtroom. More than half of them were immediately excused after saying that they could not be impartial in the case. Of the 34 potential jurors who remained in the courtroom, nine completed answering every question on the judge's 42-question list.
Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.